So I'm here to talk to, to you today about plastic tactics for about 15 minutes. I haven't timed this, so um, you can hurry me along or stop me if you want to. Um, uh, I briefly just explained, I'm Arthur. I grew up in Wales uh, in a very rural area near the Centre for Alternative Technology, which in this audience some of you might have heard of. Uh, it's, um, so I was sort of surrounded by environmentalism and sustainability uh, for a long time and uh, moved to Liverpool uh, about eight years ago to do an engineering degree and following that engineering degree I've been doing engineering jobs and a bit of design work as well. I'm sort of interested in product design. Um, but I'm moving into plastic tactics as sort of my full-time um, activity now. Um, uh, so I, d I won't give much brief on the situation with plastics because like, I think everyone in this room has a, has a fair idea and has opinions already. Um, but basically my perspective on it is that we uh, don't have much respect for our resources. So like, especially with plastic, we just we treat it for um, minutes at a time before the way for a long time. And I've been thinking today about um, the thinking about long-term decisions and about how plastic uh, breaks down. They say it breaks down, but maybe it's just leaching around. But uh, it lasts about a thousand years, some of the harder plastic. And I was thinking, that's quite a big decision to make, to just throw something away and be like, OK, I'm OK with that being there for a thousand years. So I was thinking in the context of plastic tactics, like to make long-term thousand-year decisions is sort of my, my philosophy for, for what I'm trying to achieve. Not that I expect this to be around for 10,000 for, for 10, years, but um, part of the problem, so that's the sort of general picture. You all know about the great garbage patch and um, various health issues. Um, but in Liverpool specifically, we have a bit of an issue, uh, and I'm not sort of calling out the council, but they're overwhelmed with the amount of plastic that's in the city, and the recycling rates uh, are pretty low in Merseyside. Uh, and then it's also very, like, industrial, so it's, it's taking place sort of out of sight in these industrial estates on a huge scale, um, which is sort of separating the problem from the people. So when you go to the shop and buy something wrapped in plastic. I mean, I'm, I'm not um, going to guilt, guilt trip anyone for doing that because it, it's so many things to balance. But uh, our use of plastic creates something to deal with. And the way that we deal with that at the moment is sort of out of, out of sight, out of mind. And a lot of it gets shipped to Asian countries like China. And at the start of this year, they closed down a lot of what they accept, a lot of the low-grade plastic. And so that's sort of, at the moment, uh, it's being sort of shifted around different Asian countries and they're, it's causing a sort of domino effect where they're, each new country is saying, actually, we don't, we don't want it either. It's just, it's not worth dealing with. Uh, so I think there's a responsibility on people in the UK to deal with it at the source. Um, sorry for having this negative image up here for so long. Um, so. Uh, I haven't said much about what Plastic Tactics is or what it's, what it's doing. Uh, I thought I'd just tell you about what I've already done to give you some context about, about that. Uh, so the main, the main thing is around the inspiration. Uh, it's come at the right time. That I, in a, I'm in a place in my life where I can sort of take a risk and, and do something with this and um, spend the time on it. Precious Plastic is a Dutch movement. Um, by a guy called Dave Hackens, who developed very low-cost um, machinery and processes to recycle plastic on a very small scale. So the idea is that anyone can have a go. And that's sort of the philosophy that, that I'm taking forward. And uh, it's about bringing recycling, instead of having it in this industrial context, to make it more of a craft activity and to really make plastic uh, a, a precious resource because plastic is an amazing material. It's strong, it's light, it lasts for a long time. Uh, it's waterproof. I mean, different kinds of plastics have amazing properties. So it's not about demonizing plastic per se. It's about having the respect and saying, oh, this is actually a really amazing material. Uh, like, you wouldn't throw gold in the landfill. Uh, we shouldn't throw plastic in the landfill. We should be quite careful about how we use it, um, in my opinion. I'm very careful about using words like could and should and you ought to. <laughs> but um, Sometimes they slip out. Um, so yeah, so they, uh, 
released this shredder design, so a plastic shredder. So you can throw plastic bottles, packaging into this, and it'll churn it up into little flakes. And then you can take those flakes and you can make things with them um, by heating them up, melting them, and then squashing them into various shapes. And you can make all sorts. And I'll, I'll show you some pictures of those later. Um, so that's been uh, the last few weeks I've been working in the workshop building one of these and uh, I'll tell you where it's gone in a minute. I haven't had much time to use it myself uh, because of the student projects. So I've partnered with, partnered is a bit strong of a word, but uh, I'm sponsoring some student projects at the University of Liverpool. The uh, engineering department has um, worked with me to give uh, four individual projects uh, based around this system. And so what the students are doing is they're taking plastic from campus, so they've got a special bin in the uh, campus guild, that's the uh, student union, and they're taking plastic bottles and plastic caps, and they're going to take those and use them, use the shredder, this is the shredder going together, uh, to make flakes from these, uh, the plastic waste, which was, uh, I, think, I think the bottles were being recycled, but they're going to take them, melt them into a, a thin wire, and use that for 3D printing. So that's a whole other issue about explaining what 3D printing is. But basically, it's a, it's a new manufacturing technique, newish, uh, where you can make lots of different uh, products. Uh, and the stuff that they'll be doing will be a bit of novelty items. So they'll be making like key rings or um, souvenirs, just to explain that plastic can be used and to to have a simple story where plastic comes in at one end and then with a few, a few hours and a few simple machines, you can make something really valuable from it. And we've got a dream to take that to festivals in Liverpool next year and to sort of cycle around with the machine on the back, shredding and showing what it can make. Just to, to make people, it's to help people make the connection between the material and what you can do with it instead of just being this disposable throwaway thing. Um, so this is the bottom of the extruder machine, which is the next machine that I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm about to, to start making. And it comes out as this wire, so that goes into the, the 3D printer. Um, okay, I've also, uh, it feels like bragging now that it's come up, but um, I've, I've been uh, supported by the School for Social Entrepreneurs in Blackburn House, so they're, they're helping me with the business side of things. Uh, so I come from an engineering design background with very low business sense. And so it's very easy for me to do stuff and make stuff happen and also bankrupt myself in the process. So I'm hoping that with the support of the social entrepreneurs, they'll explain to me, okay, well, this is how you can get some revenue and keep things going. And uh, although this is, feels a bit ego heavy now that it's there, I actually don't want to have plastic tactics like synonymous with Arthur, the person. I want it to be its own thing and as people come in, it builds up, and, and it, the sustainability of it from a business sense will keep, keep the recycling and the awareness raising happening. Um, so I've set myself up as a CIC, which is a community interest company, so not to get too bogged down in legal structures, but uh, what that means is that although it's a for-profit company that will be selling things and doing services, all that money is asset locked to the local community. So uh, I can draw a salary from it, but I can't take bonuses. And also, if I ever get swapped out with somebody else, nobody can take over. It's, it's locked into Liverpool, the local area. Um, so that's, I hope that explains what that is. <laughs> um, and then one of the main things that I've been doing is uh, looking at other people's work. Sorry if I've block blocked anyone there. Uh, on on social media, there's, it's, so Precious Plastic is a sort of global community, and there's lots of people experimenting with similar, similar sorts of ideas, and uh, I'm learning a lot just from looking. So these are plastic tiles, um, and I'll talk about that a bit more in a moment. But uh, these are from, I assume, bottle caps or various bits of plastic that you can collect from households or even from litter picks. Uh, and then they squash them into these quite nice tiles. Uh, and then a recent one that really impressed me was a guitar that an Australian university student had taken waste plastic and then, yeah, made a whole uh, Fender Stratocaster <coughs> from it. 
And then uh, there's a lot of opportunity for art as well. It doesn't all... Uh, I mean, I would like <coughs> lots of practical products to be made, but you can just go uh, and make incredible things like this. So this is all waste plastic, and it's, it's big as well. It's about this big. And that's from Precious Plastics' official... Uh, they did an exhibition explaining the story of plastic, and this was part of that. Uh, so that's what I've done. What am I doing next? Uh, so community building. So that's, that's partly why I'm here, is to say, like, this is what I'm doing, and I'm open to ideas about what you want to do and, um, and what I should do, even if you don't, don't want <coughs> to get involved directly. And the bridge is a, a collaborative... It's the first physical location. So we're hoping to set up a little workspace in Wavertree. It's at the corner of Wavertree and Picton by um, Edge Hill Railway Station. And there's already some wood recycling going on there. And I'd like to bring some plastic recycling in there. And I've got uh, another friend with a project who's doing food waste recycling, or organic waste. Um, so the idea is that there'll be all these novel ways of recycling and making value from waste products. Uh, on the same site, and it's going to be open to the community, so we'll run workshops, and um, I'll be trying to take plastic tactics into school to take the machines in and show that you can make something out of plastic on the spot. Um, more machines is what I'm looking at next, so um, they all work on taking your shredded bits of plastic and melting them down and squashing them into various shapes. But there's lots of different ways to do that, and it's a lot of uh, like nitty-gritty detail to get, to get good products from it. Um, but the next one I'm working on is the extruder there for the students. And then uh, I'll mention Liam in a moment, but uh, he's been building an injection molder and a compression molder to make all different things. Um, and so another thing that Plastic Tactics is trying to do and, and trying to bring up is making and uh, helping people have access to tools and machinery and expertise that helps them make things that they can use themselves or they can sell. Uh, and I'm also interested in empowering people who are more interested in the business side. Um, and so maybe they can link up with somebody who's made something but just wants to make. Um, and they want to just sell, and they can go, oh, well, I really like your product, I really believe in it, and then they can go and sell that to the wider community. So it's acting as a sort of a, a bridge to bring makers and salespeople together. But, yeah. Um, okay, and if, if you're interested, uh, how can you help? With your support and enthusiasm and uh, good vibes, they keep me going, but also your criticism, if you see something I'm doing that doesn't quite feel right, uh, I'm, I'm wide open to criticism. It doesn't even have to be constructive. Just have a go. Um, <laughs> but it'll be, uh, it'll be useful. <laughs> uh, so that's a sort of whistle-stop tour of the last three months of my life. Um, uh, yeah, thank you for listening. <laughs> okay. Okay.